Today's episode of Film Learning is brought to you by our three new patrons for January, Andre, Kurt, and John. Thanks very much, guys. Hey, dude. Yeah? Check this out. Pretty badass, right? Yeah, totally badass. You weren't in your bathrobe, you bellend. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learn you good. And that's right, the effect that I've been teasing for about a month and a half now is finally here. My god. And if you saw the beginning, you know it's the Doctor Strange shield effect from Infinity War and Doctor Strange. What the? Now you might be asking yourself, hey Grant, why are you tackling this effect considering it's been done hundreds and hundreds of times on YouTube. Well, I'm glad you asked that question, and the answer is pretty simple, guys. I thought I could bring something new to this effect, and that is 3D. If you watch a bunch of these tutorials, you'll see that most of the time, the shield is a 2D plane. So the moment you rotate that thing, it's really noticeable. My particular shield was built in Cinema 4D, and you can rotate your camera all the way around that thing, and you'll see a full 3D shield. So it doesn't matter what shot you set up, you put that camera in place and you can rotate this thing whatever angle you like. Now guys, I know I say this a lot these days because we're doing some more advanced stuff, but this is a longer tutorial. It's not hard, but it has a lot of steps. So let's just jump into how we build this thing. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor doing the hand signals and then bringing their hands out to fists. If you wanna see what that's like, just check out the clip below and you'll be able to see Doctor Strange's hand signals. You'll also need to head to filmlearner.com slash downloads and grab the Doctor Strange Shield effects pack, which includes a 3D Shield Cinema 4D file, and it also includes a couple of 720p samples of Spark assets from our good friends at Action VFX. And as always, guys, I am compelled to mention if you click the link below and use the code FILMLEARN, you will get 10% off your purchase. They've got a whole bunch of these assets, guys. They've got Spark assets, Fire Embers, all kinds of things that go Sparky. So check out actionvfx.com. Okay, you got all that? Well, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I have my shots set up in a comp and ready to go. As you can see, I do the flashy hands and then BAM out to fists. So our first step here is to track our hand movement. Now we could do this in After Effects with the inbuilt tracker, but since Mocha is a thing and you know, way better, let's use that. So I'll select my clip, head to Effect, Boris Effects and grab Mocha AE. Let's open that up. And once inside, tracking itself is pretty easy. Let's start on the last frame, there we go. And then from there, let's grab the X-Spline tool up here and draw a rough spline around my hand. Next, let's set the pixels to 90%, turn off shear and rotation, and let's start by tracking this backwards. Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop the track when I get here because this is where my hand starts zipping around. So from here, I'm going to go frame by frame until the end or the start of the clip because I know Mocha won't be able to track my hand in this sort of flurry of uh, hand gestures. Okay, excellent. We'll just rinse and repeat that for the other hand with this sped up footage and some wacky music. <laughs> So very wacky. Finally, I'm going to rename these ones left and right respectively so I can keep track of them. Then we'll just save. There we go. And we're going to head back to After Effects. Okay, we're back. And my first step here is to add two null objects. One and two. I'll rename them both right and left. I know, I'm crazy. Out of control. From there, let's export our tracking data to both of these nulls. To do that, we'll select our footage click create track, select left hand first, head down to the export settings and we'll select our left null as the output and bam. Let's follow that up by doing that for the right one. Bam again. Next of course is the crucial step. I've imported my DS Mandela Cinema 4D file, the Doctor Strange shield, from the download pack and I'm gonna drop that bad boy right into the comp. Next, let's add a new camera right up here. 
The default settings here are fine, so let's just click OK. But then select the Cinema 4D file, head to the Effects menu, and set the camera to Comp Camera. And watch it go boop. <laughs> yeah, it moves a tad, but that's OK. Let's head up, grab the camera tool, and using the controls, position our shield into place on top of our fist, like so. This takes a little bit of patience, but you'll get there, guys. That's looking pretty good. Now, as you can see at the moment, there's no way to physically parent this Cinema 4D file to our null object. So what we have to do is grab the camera and the Cinema 4D file, and we're going to pre-compose them, and I think we'll call this Spell Left. Then we can parent it to our null object. And let's check out a preview. So you can see now our 3D file is moving with our hand. Pretty awesome, huh? Now, gang, this is where it gets a tad tricky. We still need to animate the rotation of our shield to match the hand movement when the spell is cast. Now, it's not crazy hard, it's only a few frames, but it still takes some patience. So let's get to a point on the timeline where our fist is close to its final position. This is fine. We'll then collapse down the camera transform settings and let's just go nuts and add a keyframe to as many of these as we can. We'll mainly be working with rotation and position, but there's no harm in adding a few more keyframes. Now as the hand moves up, I'm going to rotate the shield upward to follow the general alignment of where my fist is. Only for a few frames until this point right here. This is the point where the shield will first begin to appear. So for now, all we have to do is just trim the rest of our Cinema 4D file back like so. Now let's take a quick preview of that. So we wave our hands around and BAM! Shield appears and tracks perfectly to our fist. Nice. We'll now repeat those steps with the right hand. Add the Cinema 4D file. Add a camera, adjust the position, once you're happy with the position, pre-compose both the camera and the Cinema 4D file, parent them to the null, animate the camera to rotate the shield, <laughs> And then of course trim the excess from the front. Okay, we now have both shields animated. Now let's begin to composite them. Now our first step here is to pre-compose both spell layers and our two nulls into their own composition. Let's then open up that pre-comp because we're going to render these out guys. Now the reason we're doing this is to both speed up our workflow and because the glow effects we're about to add actually work better with image sequences rather than just putting all those glow effects on top of the Cinema 4D files. But before we do that, we need to fix one crucial step. We need to turn both of our Cinema 4D files from software shading to final shading. And this is where things are going to chug a little bit. But once that's done, let's head back to that spells comp once more. So, let's add it to the render queue. We'll then click on lossless and from the drop down menu let's select TIFF sequence. Make sure you enable RGB plus alpha and then let's render these out. Now guys do be prepared to wait because this might take some time to render. Remember these are full 3D layers that are all animating independent of each other and they also have animated sub polygon displacement within their textures. I may not understand any of that. Not at all. I just wanted you to know how hard it was. Moving on. Okay, I've imported the rendered TIFF file back into After Effects, and I'm gonna drop that like hot garbage, or maybe a Pitbull song, into the Shield comp. And I'll turn off our Cinema 4D files. 
Now from there, I'm gonna add something that's purely based on my shot, guys. I'm gonna head up, grab an adjustment layer, and then I'm just gonna draw a mask around the left shield here, just a rectangle, nothing fancy. Then I'm just gonna head up to blur and sharpen and add a camera lens blur and maybe set this to three. And this is mainly because my left hand is actually out of focus in this shot. So naturally, the shield is gonna be out of focus too. But like I said, this is based on my shot. If your hand's not out of focus, don't do this. Next step is to head over to presets and as you can see, I've already typed in pixel and we're gonna add pixel motion blur to our TIFF sequence. What this is gonna do is just add a little bit of natural motion blur to our shields as they come out. Okay, last step and then we'll start adding our glow. Let's head up and grab an adjustment layer. Let's then head to the first frame of our shield appearing right here. Next, we're gonna head to presets and grab roughen edges. Let's throw that on the adjustment layer. Now let's tweak this a bit. Let's take the border down to zero and set the scale to 38. From there, we're gonna hit T to bring up opacity hit the stopwatch, and then let's move forward, say 10 frames and crank it back down to zero. If we check out a preview, this gives the impression that our shields are materializing over time. Now, let's begin that glow. Let's select both nulls and copy them and head back to our final comp. Let's paste them in and save them for later. Now to make the glow work here, we need to duplicate our shields comp six times. That way we end up with seven iterations of it done. Let's work our way up. On the first layer, let's start by adding a fast blur and setting it to 0.5. Let's also add a rough and edges and we'll set the border to 5 and the scale to 10. Okay, that one's done. Now before we move on to the next layer, let's highlight every single one of these except for the bottom one and change the transfer mode to add. Done. Okay, moving on to that next layer, we're gonna add a fast blur to this layer and set the amount to 10. Next layer, let's add another fast blur and on this one, we're gonna set it to 20. We'll then hit to effect, stylize and add a glow. We'll set the threshold to 91.8 and the intensity to 8.4. Next layer, we'll add yet another fast blur and this time we'll set it to 24. Next layer, we'll add another glow. We'll set the threshold to 100, the radius to 18, and the intensity to five. We'll then follow that up by heading to Blur and Sharpen and grabbing a CC Vector Blur. We'll set the top two direction center, the amount to 10, and the property to alpha. We'll also hit T and bring the opacity down on that layer to 75%. Now, the last two layers are just extra glow. So let's add a fast blur to both layers. One. And two. And we'll set the amount on the bottom layer to 50 and the amount on the top layer to 79. Now, after all of that, we can check out a preview. Nice, it's looking good, but we still need to add a few elements to get this thing cracking. Okay, so in the project window, you'll notice we have two stills marked circle. Now, all we wanna do here is to say, head two frames before our shield appears. Drop them in one at a time and position them into place over our hands. If you wanna make them 3D and rotate them, I'd encourage that. Once they're in place, let's hit the stopwatch on both position and rotation. We'll then move forward to the next frame, sync them up with your hands again, and adjust the rotation if you feel like. Let's then enable motion blur on those. Let's then trim both layers to only last those two frames. Done and done. Now here comes the slightly fiddly part. I know, right? There's more fiddling here than Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. No one is gonna get that reference. Now, it's time to add your sparks. Now gang, Action VFX was kind enough to offer two 720p samples of sparks for you to use, but since I got the hookup, I'm gonna use the 4K versions. Now, essentially what you wanna do is add your grinding sparks at the point of the shield, hitting its mark right here, just moving into place. 
We'll then change the transfer mode to screen. And then once it's positioned in place, we'll just parent that to the null that corresponds with that shield. So if we're adding sparks to the left shield, we just parent it to the left null. Makes sense, right? We'll then turn on motion blur finally, and then we'll grab the pen tool and we're gonna mask around the top of the clip just to give it a soft edge to sell the idea that the sparks are being generated by the shield. Now guys, you can repeat these steps as many times as you like and add as many sparks as you like. I've skipped ahead and I just wanna show you where I've added them. When the hand signals are almost done, I have a spark hit on both hands. When the hands cross for the final time, I have several spark hits all at once exploding out. And of course, finally, I have a whole bunch of spark assets once they're in position. You can really go nuts here, guys, and do whatever you want, basically. Lastly, guys, we're going to add a muzzle flash at this point right here where our hands cross for the final time to really hammer this exploding effect home. So, this is also from Action VFX, guys, but you can use whatever muzzle flash you like. To add this, we need to head to this point right here, as I said, where the hands cross for the final time and drop it right here. I'm then gonna scale this one up a tad. There we go. And then I'm gonna change the transfer mode to screen. Let's also hit P to bring up position and hit the stopwatch. We'll also hit S and bring up the scaling and hit the stopwatch on that as well. We'll then move ahead one frame Let's then reposition that muzzle flash to be on top of our hands once more. And then I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit. Done. Then all that's left to do is trim the excess off that muzzle flash so it only lasts those two frames. Done. All right, let's check out a preview. Nice, it's looking very cool. Now I am gonna add one last thing, and that's a couple of iterations of light rays on top of everything to really hammer home the idea that these shields are bursting out of, you know, light out of nowhere. So to do that, let's add an adjustment layer, head to effect, generate, and we're gonna add not one, but two light rays. We'll then trim the layer to start around here, just as the shields come into view. We can then reposition them both like so. And then let's follow that up by hitting the stopwatch on both intensity and position. Okay, let's now increase that intensity to over 200 and the radius to like 125. That way they really burst out. They're kind of like a lens flare. We'll then skip ahead one frame, reposition them once more. And you know what? Let's do this for the next, say, five frames. And once we get to the end of those frames, let's now set that intensity back to zero. That way we get a big burst of light and then it just fades off. Okay, I think we're done. Let's check out a preview. Now guys, I know that was a lot of steps, but this looks really cool. And that, my friends, is another effect. Mm, done. Out of all those steps, you can get something like this. Hey dude. Yeah? Check this out. So guys, that's my take on the Doctor Strange shield effect from Infinity War, Doctor Strange, and probably Avengers Endgame that's coming out soon. As you can see, once you get that camera animation in place, it's really not that hard to composite this thing into your shot. And having it fully 3D, you can pretty much set up whatever shot you like. You're welcome. So guys, this has been a bit of a long one, so I'm just gonna wrap it up right now. If you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film on an episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got my social media crap above my head. The Patreon info is just there, guys, if you wanna support the channel, or you can hit that join button below. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.